Now, this is the photo album. Bang. Oh my gosh, Ellen, unbelievable. Unbelievable. So we found you. You found me. What are the chances that I'd open this book, see this woman laughing? I know. <gasps> so tell me, who is she? My mother, Mariah Kuzni. And that's the laughing woman. That's the laughing woman. Lorraine Franks is 88 years old, one of Mariah Kuzni's seven children. Oh, she's so young. Yes, she is. She's such a sweetheart. She was always like that. For years now, Lorraine and her daughter Christine have been unravelling the mystery of their much-loved mother and grandmother, trying to uncover the secrets of her early years in central western Queensland. How old is Mariah there? Oh, well, she'd be in her 70s. Yeah. She'd be in her 70s there. She was the most wonderful uh, grandmother. She was just absolutely wonderful. She loved her grandchildren and she adored us. She was proud of us. Do you know anything about her being stolen at 14, taken away? No, I knew nothing. No, I didn't know because she never, she never mentioned anything about that. Did you know that she worked for my family? No, I did not know. And she never spoke about this? No, never. Never spoke about anything. But it's not hard to piece together the details of Mariah's life. Born to an Aboriginal mother and a South Sea Islander father, she was an inner guy woman from the Longreach region, born around 1900, three years after the Queensland Government passed an act to forcibly remove Aboriginal people from their traditional lands. The act allowed the protector of Aboriginals to control, monitor and carefully document every aspect of their lives. It says that um, Mariah Kuzni, your mother, mm was to go and work for my great-grandfather, Henry White, mm. for 10 shillings a week at White Hill Station. She wouldn't have got those wages. Oh, I wouldn't think so. So when I look at it, I think, well, there's my family. Yes. Getting rich off stolen land. Yeah. And forced labor. Yeah, yes. She looked like she was happy, and I was sort of thinking, you know, you know, she might actually like it here. But, you know, when you start finding out the stories about, you know, where she was living in, in that, that tin shed, and, that, um, and, you know, up in Blackhaw, it is so cold in winter, and in the heat, it can be 50 degrees. So, you know, how can they stand living in a shed like that? She used to get up early in the morning when we had a rented house and it was very cold in Blackhall. Downstairs there'd be an oven. She'd put our clothes in the oven to keep them warm so that when we got up it and we'd put warm clothes on. That's my mother. This is my mum when we were dead. Um... Mariah's first two children were likely born to station bosses, men she worked for on the vast sheep stations of the Central West. She married a non-Indigenous man, Frederick Reuben White, and raised their family in the little town of Blackall. Did she ever talk to you uh, about Indigenous language? Never, never. Culture? Never, never. I knew nothing. What was she afraid of? Well, I think she was afraid that if she drew attention to herself, then they might come. She was afraid the authorities would take Absolutely. her children. When Mariah's husband went off to the Second World War, Mariah would hide the youngest two children in a cupboard if anyone came knocking. Because they could take their children at any time and they would not give you a reason. Um, but she was still scared up until the day she died. Now this is Henry White. Okay. She worked for Henry. Yeah. And here's all the kids. <laughs> In it's all car. his family. Ten children. So she brought these up at I that age. Say, I would say. They would have really bonded to my mother at that age, you know, being with them all the time. Yeah. My family exploited your mother. I don't think my mother ever held anything against anybody that she worked with or whatever happened to her. 
because she made her own life. Look at that. With the pretense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh -huh. Unbelievable. Look, you cannot blame the children of today of what the elders did yesterday. You can't do that. So I guess that my family owes a debt of gratitude to your family because when they came from England and Ireland, mm. they had nothing. Mm. They were pretty much illiterate and off the back of the work and the knowledge mm. of country that your mm. family brought, mm. my family mm. is educated mm. and where we are today. Mm. So does thank you seem the right thing to say? Yeah, of course it is, Alan. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. There's, there's more than, you know, enough, as far as I'm concerned. My mother would be... She would be smiling down on us now. I I'm, I'm, I'm really mean that. We won't forget each other. We won't. No. <laughs> no, we're sort of family. <laughs>